Does the OGL Backlash have you looking for a new fantasy tabletop RPG, which isn't Pathfinder? Then why not give RuneQuest a chance? Isn't that why you're here? If you're looking for a fantasy tabletop RPG that has almost as much history as Dungeons & Dragons, but is a little bit more brutal yet elegant, you may want to give RuneQuest, role-playing in Glorantha, or RuneQuest for short, a try. Published by Chaosium, RuneQuest dates back to 1978, just a few years after Dungeons & Dragons first hit the market. Now, RuneQuest is notable not only for being the first game to have skill rules, which is now a standard in most role-playing games, including Dungeons & Dragons, its rule set also became the foundation for the basic role-playing system that Chaosium uses in most of its games, including Call of Cthulhu. Now, RuneQuest uses the same types of dice as Dungeons & Dragons, your D4, your D6, your D8, your D12, your D20, uh, but it primarily uses percentile dice for making most checks, that is the 2d10s. The d100 system is an elegant one. Different skills and attacks have percentile ratings, and you simply need to roll under that percentage for a success. Now, players score a critical success, usually when they roll a 1, but they can also get a special success, which ranks somewhere between a crit and a normal success with a very low roll. Now, even if players have like a very high percentile rating, like in the 95s to 100 range, you can still fail a roll if you roll a 96 or higher. Your super high skills, you know, the ones which have 100% or higher, are instead rewarded by having a better range for criticals and special successes. So, for instance, if you have a 100% in a skill, that means that you roll a crit with a 1 through 5 instead of just a 1. And you get a special success with a 6 through 20 or a 1 through 20 if, for some reason, you don't get crits on a particular skill check. Another major part of RuneQuest are, well... The runes. Those represent the actual fundamental building blocks of Glorantha. The, the gods of Glorantha, which are a major part of the campaign setting, may merely be personification of the runes themselves, and people place runes on just about everything. Now, runes mechanically can be used in a few different ways. They can be used for rune magic, or they can be used for runic inspiration, which allows a player to augment certain abilities. Now, players can also consult their character's runes for role-playing purposes, granting them insight as to what uh, you know a character might do in a sticky situation. Now, combat works a little bit differently in RuneQuest. Uh, players, of course, make their attack rolls based on a weapon's percentage to see if they can hit. And their target can try to parry to block the attack, but at the risk of damaging their weapon if the parry is successful. Yes, weapons have hit points in this game. Or they can attempt to dodge to totally avoid an attack. Now, if the attack hits, players roll a d20 to determine which body part an attack hits. Now, players have a total hit point figure, and they die if that hit point ever drops to zero. However, each body part also has an individual hit point total. And characters can lose limbs, or they can bleed out if certain body parts reach zero HP. And if a player takes massive damage in the head or the chest, they can instantly die with no chance of recovery. <laughs> Now, the world of Glorantha is one of the great fictional campaign settings of all time. It's a world heavily inspired by folklore, where the gods have an active role in the world and religion and belief is a central tenet of the game. Sure, Glorantha is populated by the dwarves and the elves and trolls and other standard fantasy tropes and races, but there are some fundamental key differences. For instance, the elves. Instead of being pointy-eared, long-lived humanoid creatures, they are sentient humanoid plants. And the dwarves, well, they're literally made of stone. But most importantly, Glorantha has a playable duck race. That's right, the Darules are literally ducks with human arms, think Donald Duck, who are kind of this scapegoat for the universe. But they're also very deadly warriors, as their dying race lives on the edge of a swamp that's infested with the undead. So just imagine a, a Donald Duck, but badass and persistently dour. You have yourself a RuneQuest duck. 
So even without the pending D&D diaspora, RuneQuest is a great game that really everyone should try. It's got a dash of Conan the Barbarian, a little bit of Greek or European mythology, and it has a really fun rule system that's actually been used in a ton of different games. If you learn how to play RuneQuest, then you know how to play Call of Cthulhu, you know how to play ElfQuest, you know how to play any game that's made with the basic role-playing system. So if you want to give RuneQuest a try, there's actually a free quick start on Chaosium's website, and there's also a starter set available for just $30. Now, if you want to dive into a full campaign, you may want to pick up the core rulebook and the bestiary. Now, if you're looking for something completely different, something that's not fantasy at all, why don't you check back next week when we give you a primer on the world of Call of Cthulhu. So, have you given RuneQuest a shot? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the character sheet.